In 1873, John Stuart Mill wrote in his autobiography, ask yourself if you're happy and you cease to be so. And if we find ourselves pondering our own happiness, maybe it's because we're unhappy. What is happiness? And is it something we can all find? Ancient philosophers like Socrates, Plato and Aristotle saw happiness as a goal that is achieved through living a virtuous life. In religion, happiness is a state of being, something like the nirvana that Buddhists strive for or the state of blessedness promised to Christians through the teachings of Jesus. But with thousands of years of contemplation and the power of modern science, are we any closer to achieving happiness? Most of us live in capitalist democracies an economic and social system that offers us freedom to choose, to speak and to be whatever we wish. It has its roots in a theory that strive to achieve the greatest happiness for the greatest number of people. So can we define happiness through capitalism? According to researchers, a good, strong marriage is worth about $100,000 a year, whereas a divorce has a negative worth of about $66,000. Having sex once a month is worth about $50,000 a year, and the price tag on making an unhappy person happy is well over $1 million. So does this mean that we can buy happiness? Wealth does make us happy, but only up to a certain point. Because once we have eliminated the dangers of poverty, secured our safety, gained access to good medicine, and are able to feed ourselves and our family, wealth stops contributing to overall happiness. Developed countries experience many times the wealth and levels of education than they did in the past, and yet they appear to be no happier than they were before. Other scientists believe that our brain chemistry can also control our level of happiness and brain chemistry can be affected by drugs. So in theory, one day, happiness could be a pill. But let's take a look at an alternative. In the tiny mountain kingdom of Bhutan, instead of measuring its country's wealth in gross national product, more emphasis is placed on what they call gross national happiness. And the idea may be catching. Researchers in America have found that if we look after the smiles on people's faces, the dollars will look after themselves. In other words, happiness improves productivity and increases wealth. So if money can't buy happiness, was John Mill right? Or perhaps 23 centuries ago, those distant figures like Aristotle, Socrates and Plato, who thought that an unexamined life was not worth living, held the key to happiness all along. <laughs>